It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Theroux here, Mary Jo Foley. Uh, we'll have an update on Cyan for the Nokia phones. Here it comes. The latest on Threshold. It's just around the corner. Windows 9 and a whole lot more. Stay tuned. Windows Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley, episode 377, recorded August 27th, 2014. The Fruitcake Phone. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Lynda.com. Lynda.com is an easy and affordable way to help you learn. Instantly stream thousands of courses created by experts on business, software, web development, graphic design, and more. For a free trial, visit lynda.com slash windows. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash windows. And by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to 50-plus job boards with one click. Try ZipRecruiter with a free four-day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. And by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code Windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where uh, Windows is uh, discussed uh, weekly. Uh, that's that's why we, we, we call it that. <laughs> that's the, the genius behind our genius. name. Genius. Mm-hmm. That's Paul Therat, speaking of geniuses, back from Barcelona. Uh, I brought you back a little prematurely. I thought you were already back uh, last week, but no, you just got back. And you're probably a little yep. jet-lagged. It's the middle of oh, the yeah. night. Only 20 hours of travel door-to-door, so that was great. <sighs> why is that? <laughs> I don't know. Part of it was Aer Lingus. <laughs> you you, getting... you flew through Ireland? Yeah, because okay. it's kind of on the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mary Jo Foley on the right. She uh, writes about Microsoft for ZDNet at allaboutmicrosoft.com. Paul, of course, calls his uh, home on the internet the super site for Windows. Not being prone to hyperbole or anything. It's uh, winsupersite.com. But, you know, it, com. it is, by the way, a super, super site. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this on this podcast, but the reason I named it that wasn't so because it was super, you know, but rather because it was uh, dedicated only to that version of Windows at the time, uh, which was NT 5.0, which became Windows 2000. My intent was for it to be like a a one-off site just for that one. Oh, like this is the super site for that version of Windows. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That actually makes sense. Yeah, and but a lot of people look at that and like, wow, this guy really has a big head, <laughs> which well, that's I do true too in real life. But I mean, not in the way that you're thinking. No, <laughs> he's got a massive pumpkin. Yeah, uh, as do I. So it's okay. Poor Mary I Jo. Try to s- myself to sleep on my enormous yeah. pillow. We really should put her in the middle. And then <laughs> no, I be- actually, you know what? I have a gigantic head too. I think this is an Irish thing. The big, the big <laughs> head brigade. Yeah. We should just call us uh, Windows Big Heads. That's it. When I first started doing these shows, now that we're going down memory lane, I really mm-hmm. thought that because at the time when people watched video, they watched it on a tiny, like, you know, iPod size screen. I thought, right. I, I, call, I, I actually said big head video. I thought all of the shots should be super tight on people's heads so that you could see them. So and, you could actually see them. Yeah, see their expressions. Because now, now you've got that HDTV problem where all of a sudden you can see every pore in our yeah, skin. And we're yeah. actually <laughs> saying to them, now back off. Move, yes, can you move crazy. the camera back a How little do you guys more? Feel about a long shot. <laughs> a little, a little more, a little more yeah. back, back. Is there? How is there room across the back? Street? Anyway, welcome back, Paul. Did you, I think you had a great time. Just judging from your pictures on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Did a lot of stuff with the kids, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Yep. Are you re- are you refreshed? The problem with no, uh, being a nope. blogger is you work the whole time. <laughs> I have not even unpacked, Leo. I'm Oy. a mess. Oy. Oy. So. Well, while you were, uh, you know, gallivanting about Europe, Mary Jo had her nose to the grindstone and her fingers to the keys, sure. <laughs> cranking out scoop after scoop. The latest the Threshold Enterprise preview will be September 30th. 
Yeah, that's not even my scoop. That that was Tom Warren's scoop from The Verge. But I, I've been trying to confirm it to make sure that that was correct. And I have managed to finally confirm it with my own sources now. So yes, September 30th is the date that something is going to be revealed, at least. I don't know if that's the date we'll get the bits, but um, that's the re big reveal date. Ah, so you might not get a copy of it. You might just learn something about it. Yeah, I, but the, the bits supposedly are coming right around that time. So it may be on that day or slightly after that. And they are going to be uh, what people are calling the enterprise tech previews. So I think it's going to be just for Intel, uh, just focused primarily, at least primarily on what is new in the desktop and not so much on the uh, other side of, of Windows 8, 9 or whatever this gets called. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, there's going to be something that people take away with them, take home yeah. to play with. Um, and will it be reflective of what the final version of Threshold will be? No, um, it's just going to show us a subset of what is coming in Threshold. So it, not all of the features and maybe not even all of the features we've heard leaks about are going to be in there at that point. Okay. So yeah. don't draw Early any conclusions. Preview. I mean, this is a month no. away. Yeah, it's like one month away. I know. Yep. Um, I'm so happy because my computer is so stable right now. <laughs> yeah, let's break, let's break it. Let's break it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why are you running? It's kind of boring. Why are you running stable bits? You could be running the new thing. Right. The new broken yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, that's uh, good. Uh, is, it is good. Is this on schedule? This is what they expected to do probably, huh? Yeah, I yeah. think it's very much on schedule because yeah. Paul and I have been reporting for mm -hmm. months that uh, Threshold is supposed to be in the spring of 2015 when it gets released, and it sounds like they are right, at least right now, right on target for that. Is it late yeah. to put out a preview, though, if you were uh, going to ship in the spring? Actually, this is exactly when we heard April 2015, you kind of do the math and you say October is the mm -hmm. exact right time for that You beta, want six months, you call it. six or yeah. seven months, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Will there be a public beta as well? I mean, you know, consumer beta? Yeah. Um, so we're, we're getting kind of various tips on this. And I think this enterprise tech preview is going to be public. So anybody who wants to try installing it can. Uh, so it will be public a public preview. Uh, but there's still going to be another preview, I believe, in January or February that is on ARM devices. So I think oh. this is going to be the version that runs on, on Windows Phone and on ARM-based tablets and other devices that will come in January and February. And, and when you say that, you're not talking RT, you're talking Pro. Uh, I'm talking about this new SKU they're building of Threshold that's supposedly a combination of Windows Phone OS and Windows RT. <laughs> okay. Yeah. A big munch together new thing <sighs> wow. that'll probably have some new name. Um, not be called Windows RT, I'm betting. Munch would be an excellent Mun name. Munch would Windows be a nice munged. name. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> TM. <laughs> <laughs> Windows Munchly. Uh, there are those, the wags among us in the chat room, who would say, well, of course it's on time. There wasn't much to do. They just are skinning Windows 8.1 to make people like it better. That's a little tough. But I, I actually, you know, we've talked before about why they're doing this, why they're going to rename it, all that kind of stuff. But ultimately what we're looking at here is almost certainly Windows... 8.1 level of improvements, right? So if you go from Windows 8 to 8.1, it was a pretty decent jump, but yeah. it kind of showed you what they could do in a year, uh, roughly, of time. And, and Windows 9, or whatever they call it, threshold, um, is really the same kind of thing. They, they could have called it 8.2, but of course, they don't want to call it, you know, they want to move past Windows 8, right. so uh, they'll call it Just as they else. could have called Windows 7, Windows Vista 2. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, yeah. and by the way, no, I, I don't mean <laughs> is, this cynically. Is threshold um, to eight as vist as seven was to vista? Is was that is that yeah. a fair? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fix the fix. I, I I remember when seven came out. I said, well, they've just uh, uh, you know shined up the rough spots, sanded Lipstick down the rough on the spots. Peg, Leo. Yeah, cleaned it up. <laughs> no, yeah. I, you know, Windows Vista was an obvious problem, right? And so fixing it was easy in the sense that. The problem was easily identifiable. It was a, a goal you could kind of go after. They took three years to do it. I mean, uh, and they made it happen. And so I think when you look at Windows 8, actually, Windows 8's a bigger problem, <laughs> you know, than Windows Vista was because it's not immediately obvious because 
there had to have been some discussions where they said, you know, we've gone down this rabbit hole. Do we keep moving in this direction? I mean, uh, it would have been potentially disastrous for them to have backed off of, say, you know, the metro environment, for example, with like a lot of people have asked for them to do. Um, but they've kind of put themselves into a particular direction. And so, I, you know, if anything, this is even more important uh, because it, it's not really necessarily obvious all the time what they need to do. This is a yeah. Go ahead. I, I was going to say I think it's you know a, a lot of this release is going to be about perception too. It's going to be about features, obviously, and how they change the uh, the desktop, how they change the metro side of the operating system. But it's also going to be about changing perceptions because I've said it before on the on the show and said it in blog posts. But even though I don't think Windows 8 is like Vista in terms of being a really problematic release. Uh, feature wise, I think it's already now tainted with this idea that it's awful. And yep. the, the general public is like, ah, oh, I heard there's this thing, it's Windows 8, it's terrible, I don't want it on my PC. And they got to get away from that. They have to get away yeah. from that perception. Well, you know, it's a little of both. Uh, you're absolutely right. It's the perception has tainted this thing forever. But I've heard, you know, I, I've always had the stance, you know, Windows 8 is kind of crazy. Uh, as a technology enthusiast, I sort of enjoy the fact that Microsoft actually released something that's nuts. I mean, they're so calm yeah. and sedate and, and yeah. predictable and this is so out there it's it's crazy that mm -hmm. microsoft did this and so i kind of yeah. enjoy it from that perspective and i i use it every day and it's fine it works fine um but you know i have to say over the past couple of years uh, the sheer number of people that i know who have approached this thing and said uh wh what is this i i can't find mm -hmm. anything anymore and they're they're mm -hmm. actually legitimately flummoxed by it um you know good friends of mine I, you know a friend of mine called me before we went away last month and said, can I go back to Windows 7 on this machine? Like, what is, what, what happened here? You know, like, and he's a smart guy and I, that just happens a lot. And so, you know, I think people, when I write about this, I think people confuse, you know, people say, Paul, you said it was great and you said this and that. And it's like, you know, I still feel the way I feel about Windows 8, whatever, but you have to kind of acknowledge the real world feedback that has occurred. And obviously Microsoft is acknowledging it because they're changing uh, virtually everything. Um, is it so, changing you know, everything cosmetically though? It's not changing everything. Well, know, what's, but. you know, cosmetically, I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, when, when you change, uh, like a full screen start screen down to a start menu, which is what people have been asking for, is that cosmetic or is it, mm. uh, you know, it's also functional, right? right? It's also the user but experience. It, but it is it's, UI. I mean, it's not, uh, I guess what I'm saying is the, the kernel is solid. The underlying yeah. foundation yeah. is solid. Um, yeah, they did the some apps big, model is they did some big changes solid. between seven and eight. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, big improvements under the hood mm -hmm. and that people didn't know, don't see it. Um, and so what they look at is the UI. So a UI thing is a fairly easy thing to fix. I mean, you just fix the UI, right? Well, no, because, I, I think, uh, no. Uh, yeah. I think, I think some of these things are connected, right? Like if they take away the charms bar, like what we're hearing they're going to do, that affects more than just the UI that affects you know, how do you continue still having the um, the policies in place to allow you to share apps and, and share I things see. and print? So I it's see. it looks like you're just shifting some things around on the surface, but I think it's way deeper than that. Yeah. Um, I also think we, we don't we haven't had a lot of leaks on the on the features underneath. We've we've gotten leaks about UI changes, but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of changes under the hood in terms of APIs and security and other new features that we just haven't heard anything about yet. Yeah. The other thing is, you know, by embracing this kind of multi-touch thing in mainstream Windows and not making that a separate product, uh, Microsoft has added a level of complexity that has never existed in any operating system before, unless you want to go to back to DOS plus Windows back in the old days where you, Sometimes you would drop down to DOS to do certain things. Sometimes you go into Windows to do certain things. Um, they have to make something that somehow adapts to the type of machine you're on that presents uh, touch-friendly UIs for tablets and for those kind of uh, hybrid devices and then works the way people expect it to work on traditional PCs. Um, you know, Apple, by virtue of the fact that they have two different types of systems, uh, has a very clear target in either direction. They don't have to worry about adding support for like a command line in iOS or whatever, you know, they, it's touch. It's, you know, very simple. Uh, mm -hmm. Mac OS X is desktop, very simple. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and that's what I was saying earlier. I mean, it, it would have been a much bigger deal for them to have uh, just kind of split this thing off into two different things, although it sounds like they're sort of doing that. Uh, but under, you know, underlying this thing, it's, it's one system, you know, and so you have to, it has to work well everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a tough problem. So we no know that the uh, ARM-based, uh, what do you call it, munge? Munge. <laughs> <will be, laughs> Windows, 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 munge. Windows threshold munge will be of, uh, in preview early next year. Yeah, that's what sources are saying. We should we should point out Microsoft's not saying anything. No, no, still. yeah, yeah. Yep. All of this is yep. you know speculation. Yep. Um, new leaks this week about some new features. Yeah, I, Paul might know how new some of these are. I. I oh, think me. the stuff about live tiles. I oh, I put live folders. Live tiles live folders. on the start screen is new. Yeah, this right? is the no. This is some, this is something I talked. I think Brad and I were talking oh, about it? this. Maybe it was around okay. Bill, But this notion that this the task bar on the desktop would support tiles now instead mm -hmm. of just icons. You know, so yeah. you could get those tile updates while you're on the yep. desktop. Yeah, and notification center. I've seen people. Some people say that is coming. Just you know, something very much like what's in Windows Phone now. And I've seen others say no. But I, I, I bet they're going to do that because they're trying to unify the experience, right? Right. I would be surprised if they didn't add folders to the mm -hmm. start menu slash screen. You know, just like they have in Windows Phone. I mean, I uh, there are certain features in big Windows that don't make sense on a phone, but there are a lot of features in the phone that make that thing more mature than the metro environment on the desktop and they need to update that. I, I would be surprised if that stuff wasn't uh, wasn't happening. Yeah, me too. And uh, uh, notification center is going to change or? Yeah, we think it's going to be more like the phone. Um, that's our guess. That's good. I, you know, I think Windows Phone is really kind of nice. Is this for the ARM based version or for all versions? That's yeah, a that's, good question. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, we, we reported this, Paul and I both reported this before, but we should probably restate it again. We think what's going to happen is the operating system is going to adapt to the kind of hardware it's on, just like what they did with Windows 8.1 oh, uh, update. So if you're if you are using it on a certain kind of a device with a certain profile, like say it's a tablet, you're going to get a certain experience by default. If you if you're using it on a desktop with a mouse and keyboard attached, it's going to give you a different experience because it's going to recognize you're on that kind of hardware. And we think that uh, is going to continue over into Threshold, and that's the way different people are going to get different UIs and different experiences and uh, interact with it in a different way. So it's it's almost like the, the device is going to define the experience you get. And I think there will be an opportunity to change some defaults, but I don't know, for example, if you're on a desktop, if you'll be able to change it so you automatically default to tiles. Right. I, I don't know right. how that would that would have really um, eliminated some of my <laughs> yep. problems with Windows 8 had they yep. instead of trying to just be all things to all people on all devices had they said oh you have touch so mm -hmm. we're gonna g give you this a more touch centric what experience. people were asking for from day one I mean yeah. th they have it in 8 we have the technology we yeah can, it's there we right. do that. I mean, if this then that if yeah. only there were some kind yeah. of only, uh, notion of computer know. science only that, programming had some, <laughs> something like a know. case statement uh, I don't know no, I'm not. I'm not a programmer, like, um, <laughs> but they did add. I mean, they added that, right? So I, it's not hard to imagine that they'll continue that. And there are certainly uh, options in eight one that will allow you to boot to the start screen if that's what you want to do, even on a on a desktop. That kind of makes Satya Nadella's one Windows make more sense in a way, right? Yeah. One yeah. Windows that adapts to the platform that it's on. Mm -hmm. Sure, gives you the most platform centric, and I love the idea of saying, "Well, I'm, the defaults are going to be, you know, platform centric." But you could change it if you really want a desktop on a touch device. Go ahead. I, mm -hmm. We played yesterday with the uh, Mike Elgin was reviewing the uh, new Toshiba eight inch Windows Pro tab eight Pro tablet, mm -hmm. um, and I was it was impressive in some ways. Um, and it, and the tiles and the you know the UI makes perfect sense. As soon as you go to the desktop, it's like I, what. So small. Yep. I can't. <laughs> what is this what thing? Is that? But it, but the touch thing was very impressive, and you get compatibility with with Windows applications and stuff. I, I you know RT is a little ahead of its time. Um, this wasn't RT. This, this was world. full full Windows. Though. No, no, I know that. Um, what I mean by that is that you know in the future, hopefully, 
you don't need to go to the desktop uh, and you can just run that full yeah. environment and, that, yeah. and it, in that case RT would be fine. You know, today you kind of need that security blanket. And so even though it's a little ridiculous that, you know, the desktop icons are tiny and all that kind of stuff, and you can you can bump those up. It's never going to be great on an 8-inch screen on touch. But, you know, if you have your music collection in iTunes or you have, uh, you know, use the Chrome web browser or whatever it may be, there's always going to be that one thing. Uh, just having that as kind of a security blanket that you can run that app and, and move forward and then get more comfortable with the Metro stuff and maybe find alternatives there moving forward. You know, for now, that kind of x86 tablet, mini tablet, whatever, I still think it makes the most sense because you never know. You know, I think the worst thing about using an RT device right now is you're basically stuck with IE. And in the touch environment, it doesn't support extensions. And wow, so that's not very good. That's always been um, one of my biggest confusions is two versions of IE that behave completely yeah. differently in, yeah. depending on the environment, you know. Right. So... Uh, you know, they're making it, it's a technological transition. And so it happens over time. Um, and we'll see how that goes. I, I, I constantly sort of reevaluate it. I look at web-based alternatives to desktop applications, you know, try to find some way where maybe someday a Lumia 2520 or a Surface 2 or something, you know, could actually make sense because those devices get terrific battery life. They have nice screens. They're nice and thin and light and everything. But, you know, I just, I have this handful of apps. I mean, I just have to kind of use regularly every single day, really. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. It's hard making that change. Uh, okay. Anything else to say? Windows um, phonies I, is uh, Paul, Paul Thorat's <laughs> yeah, neologism. I want to hear about that. But first, I, I should also mention I've been hearing we're going to see, um, at the same time as we see this Enterprise Tech Preview, we're going to get a preview as well of Windows Server Threshold, which we have had zero leaks about, zero. pretty much. Yeah, zero. Yep. Yep. So that should be interesting to see what they're doing on server. To the tune too. where the lack of leaks is making people nervous. You know, <laughs> they're they're going to upgrade server, right? You know, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, of course they are. I, it's amazing we've heard nothing about this. Yeah. But what about phonies? I, I didn't catch your little thing. On <laughs> well, you've heard the term uh, like Franco phony, right? Like a <laughs> person who is a uh, like a not a, a Franco file, but a phony mm -hmm. Franco. Right. Yeah. So I was referring to people who work on the Windows team as Windows phonies, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, a couple people were kind of amused by. Um, mm -hmm. No, I, I, you know, I had written something about the threshold public preview for the IT audience, you know, over at Windows IT Pro and. This is an audience that is just turned off by Windows 8 completely. These are the guys who stuck, or probably in some cases still stuck on XP and want to be there. Yeah. Will stick to Windows 7 as long as they can, and didn't hear anything that they ever anything good about Windows 8 ever that they wanted to hear. Um, I don't remember if you were at this, but the reviewers workshop they had for the Windows 8 probably developer preview, they brought out. I want to say Ian McDonald or somebody came out and talked about yep. business features for. Windows 8, and it was just the most, there was nothing to say. I mean, it was just nothing. It was just yeah. nothing, you know? Yeah. And I, I do think there's an action. Now, today, things have changed. Obviously, uh, things have improved. There is actually a pretty decent business story there. Um, but, you know, as Mary Jo has been writing about, they're really focusing this public preview on this audience because they're the ones that have been lost, you know, with Windows 8. And they really need to get these guys back in the fold. Because once you start skipping Windows versions, um, you know, at some point they're going to say, you know, the next time we upgrade this line of business app, why don't we just make it a web app and then it won't matter what people use and we don't, you know, you, you just stop worrying about that kind of stuff. And so they need yeah. to get these guys back. In yeah. The and tent. you know, IT, IT usually does tend to skip a release, you know, like a lot of people well, went from XP like to seven. Two. <laughs> right. You know? That's what they're uh, worried about. They don't uh, want that to happen. Right. And so they know. They're all on Windows 7, right? And uh, the next logical thing is they go to Windows 9. But if they decide to skip it, you're right. That's a big, big you've got, problem. You've got this 10-year time frame, right, yep. which is the entire support contract for Windows 9. And so you can kind of space it out because those guys started in, what, 2009 with Windows 7. Uh, so it ends in 2019, which is a little weird to think about. It's five years away. Um they don't upgrade to Windows 9, uh, there may be no more upgrading after that. You know, Maybe that's when some future generation of IT that's come up through the ranks and used Apple products and Google, ser Google services in school says, um, why, are we, uh, why are we paying for this yeah. stuff? 
Yep. You know, and you know, um, right. And and the other thing is, we keep hearing this idea that Windows Threshold might be the last Big Bang release, and after that, Microsoft's going to do these rolling incremental upgrades, either on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis somehow. So if you miss getting on that train, then things get even harder because they're rolling out these constant updates that you may um, be able to opt into, or in some cases, maybe mandatory. So if you don't get on there, by the time you decide to get on, there's been a whole bunch of rolling upgrades and you're a little bit behind the curve, right? And actually, it's funny, you know, even that very notion that they might go to this kind of subscription model, which obviously has been one of those on on again, off again, rumors about Windows for years and years. Um, I could almost imagine IT hearing that and saying, well, then why are we upgrading? You know, I mean, well, why bother? I mean, uh, if Threshold is the last of the line, then let's ride this one out for five more years and see what happens, you know. Yeah. Um, so this stuff is all very, it's a its a precarious situation from Microsoft's perspective. And so when I wrote about this, you know, for that audience, my, my take on it was like, look, we don't really know a lot about it. Here are the features that have been kind of thrown around. I've heard about some of these independently. Others have come from people like Mary Jo and Brad over at Neowin mm-hmm. and so forth. Uh, none of these should excite you in the slightest. None of them. The one thing that should excite you is they're listening. They understand yeah. that they lost you. They want you back. They want to get your feedback. They want you to try this thing. They want to make sure it meets your needs. Um, that's a good position to be in if you're IT. And so I'm, I'm hoping that people give this thing a chance and try it because I don't feel like with Windows 8 that actually happened. And... Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think this is, I, I don't mean to make it sound dramatic, It's, but it is sort of do or die time in the sense that I, I do feel like this very important part of the user base is kind of on the line. I, they're not going anywhere in the sense that they're going to continue to do Office 365 or some yeah. kind of exchange type solution or whatever, but um, the client is becoming less and less important, frankly. Mm-hmm. And I think that when you have your services available on all devices and all platforms on the web, uh, you're making it hard to sell, you know, asking people to spend money on Windows PCs, which are by nature complex. Uh, it's becoming less of a slam dunk for them. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. But uh, but I, I like your point there that they are listening. And um, Paul was at Partner Show when, when Kevin Turner stood up and said, you know what, we're not going to talk to you today about the next version of Windows, but we will tell you we're talking right. to businesses and they made a real point of saying publicly, we're talking to businesses and they made sure that was stressed because that is something that a lot of business users felt they didn't do enough with Windows 8. So they're making a real concerted effort to go out there and say, we're talking to them. That's the group we're talking to now because we know we kind of screwed up on that. And, and sort of on a related note, I mean, how unilateral was the user experience in Windows 8? It was this unilateral. It was on server. I mean, not only did they yeah. jam it down everyone's throats as consumers, as business users on the desktop, they jammed it down server users' throats. Uh, that made no sense at all. And I, you know, we'll see what happens with server. I mean, if 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 it's anything short of we're getting rid of all of that crap, I'll be really surprised. In fact, that would be uh, a very happy Windows Server release, I think, mm-hmm. for a lot of people, just getting rid of that stuff. Mm-hmm. We're going to take a break. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, we're talking Windows Threshold, the next version. Do they know if it's going to be Windows? Do you know if it's going to be Windows 9? Or... No. I had heard and that you know months what? ago, but, you know. You know, though, Brad, Brad Sams at Neowin tweeted out something interesting this week. He said, what if they just yeah. call it Windows? Because if Windows. this is the last Big Bang release, yeah, why not right. just call it Windows? We've been saying the last version of Windows, though, for several versions. I know. We have. We have. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they want to paint themselves into too big of a corner. True. Yeah. Um, like by calling a phone HTC One and then making a second one. Yeah. yeah. HTC <laughs> has made many ones, which is really <laughs> weird. Yeah. What would you like to learn today, my friends? At lynda.com, the sky is the limit. You can learn, uh, of course, Windows. Uh, and, and one of the things lynda.com does is they work closely with the software companies, including Microsoft, to make sure that they've got training materials out day and date. So, uh, you know, even with betas, and of course, they've got courses on Windows 8.1 tips and tricks. They've got courses on QuickBooks Pro 2014, setting up your mobile office to work from anywhere. Lots of 
office classes, this is the best way to learn. One flat monthly rate means you can take as many courses as you want at your own pace. And by the way, there are a few courses, 2,850 courses, hundreds of thousands of video tutorials produced professionally. Now, these aren't some old amateur YouTube videos. This is high quality stuff with the best trainers, the best experts in the field. Imagine learning Photoshop from Bert Monroy, photography from Derek Story. I mean, you're learning from the best people in the field. Of course, they've got apps, so you can watch on your desktop, you can watch on your iPad, your iPhone, your Android device. You could watch uh, pretty much anywhere. And if you have an annual plan, you can even download the course and, and watch it on an airplane or somewhere where you don't have connectivity. Premium plan members can also download the project files so you can practice along with the instructors. Four million plus people have taken courses at lynda.com, and we've set it up so that you could take uh, any courses you want for the next week absolutely free. Let's browse the library of courses at lynda.com. Audio production, I mean, unlimited. There's lots of soft stuff too. I mean, business skills. Uh, soft's not the, exactly the right word, but things like negotiating, managing your career, creating your resume. There's a lot to learn at lynda.com. Doesn't all have, to ha all have to be professional either. I mean, you can learn stuff for your hobby. It's a great place to learn photography. Everything from the software to lighting, shooting HDR, color correction. I'm a big fan. I want you to try it. Go to lynda.com slash windows. And uh, that's Windows for Windows Weekly. You can try it, of course, on any kind of computer and learn all about anything your heart desires free for the next week. Lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A.com slash windows free for the next week at lynda.com. They're really great. Big fan. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley are here. We're talking Winders. <laughs> and uh, that update that came out the second Tuesday of the month, is that has that was just kind of a mess. Not for everybody. So, Leo. For if it's well, <laughs> and I mentioned this, and my math wasn't so good last week, but I mentioned that when you have 150 million users and some small fraction of those have problems, it's a lot of people. Yeah. In, in this case, apparently, it was people who had font shortcuts in their font library or live folder, right. and right. the Windows update just for some of them blew screen to death. I mean, pretty serious. Yeah. They've pushed a fix. Must have been a really good font. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I imagine the reason it was a shortcut. I doubt anybody would do that. It was uh, some software did it, right, or yeah, something. Yeah. Definitely. So they fixed it. They found the problem. They fixed one of the oh, updates. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Which? They fixed the. Uh, I think it's the kernel driver one. MS fourteen dash oh forty five. Yeah. Uh, and that but there are other three. No, there are three other non security updates that. They withdrew as well, but those have not yet been reissued. So it's the uh, the one. But the security yeah, sure. uh, the security flaw has been. Yeah, vulnerabilities in kernel yeah. mode drivers. That's yep, been that, that's, that one has and been. And that's the reissued. one that's most important. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is the advice that everybody should uninstall these updates, or just if you've had problems? Most people haven't. Yeah. Uh, I, no. I don't so know I what the actually is. Do you? If you have automatic updates on, you'll get the new version. Ah, good. So the advice is just to sit back, relax, and enjoy remain the calm ride. and <laughs> soldier on. You know. Yeah. All right. Good to know. Um, these things happen. Yeah. Things happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not usually as bad as this month. But yeah, these things happen. Yeah. Now, didn't they? In the end, I think they said something like point. Oh, one percent of users wow. were affected, or some really that's tiny. Really, that's amazing because I think I heard from every single one of yeah. them. Me too. I was going to say they that. Were not I heard happy, from. By the way, no. <laughs> well, I heard Windows clear. Seven, Windows Eight. Yeah. If you get a thousand uh, very unhappy people, they're going to tweet about it, and this is the yeah. new world. You know, people don't suffer in silence anymore. Right. They make a big deal about it, <laughs> and I know because right. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. Bad, don't you? Now, when you get bad customer service or anything, yeah. your toast is cold. You tweet it. I'm never going to Applebee's again. 
Mike Toast was cold. <laughs> <laughs> and then Applebee's has to deal with it. Yeah. It's a mess. Right. Wow. Now, even on outages now, you know, like if Azure goes down for one minute, you, you should see my, tw my oh, yeah. Twitter stream. It's yeah, like first, everyone's like, Mary Jo, yeah. Azure's down, Azure's down. <laughs> yeah, but you also get that email that says, I told you that cloud computing was below. Yes. yes. Yep, I always get that. Getting one. Fewer, the, fewer of those, though, aren't we? Yep. Yeah, I noticed. You know, Windows IT Pro, again, you know, because of the audience there, I mean, these yeah. guys are kind of old school, and there are always people trying to get in these digs like, you know, more and more of my customers are moving away from the cloud. cloud you know, will never fly. Because of NSA revelations, <laughs> you know. Oh, the thing is, the cloud is so much more convenient. The idea, sure. you know, it all happened because we have multiple machines. We want our data on our phone, our tablet, our, our desktop, yeah. our laptop oh, at I'm home and at work. And the only way to do that sensibly is to store that data uh, in a central location in the cloud. Sure. Whether it's a company's cloud or Microsoft's cloud or the NSA's cloud, it's just much more convenient. Right. And it's going to win in the long run. Uh, I'm sorry. It's just going to be. Yeah. Because what else are you going to do? You're going to have, you're going to, you're going to. Well, I first I'm going to start with Tom Hanks' typewriter app. And then. <laughs> chick, 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 chick. <laughs> I want clicks. Right. No, I mean, what else are you going to do? You're going to have a cop. You're going to have a, this is what we used to do, kids. Sure. <laughs> Sync up a copy on every computer. Hey, listen, you could go back to what we were doing five years ago. I have a closet full of burned, <laughs> yeah. you know, CDs, DVDs that are all backups. and Microsoft uh, you know, briefcase, baby. My parents host Remember briefcase? Yeah. That was the solution. Yeah. Do you want to go back to briefcase? I don't think God, I so. I missed the desktop metaphor stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know? I never could. So you, so you had this fo folder called a briefcase, and you'd copy something into it. And then the briefcase in your other computer... This was basically peer-to-peer -peer networking, right? It was oh, uh, sort of a predecessor to the cloud. Oh, okay. Yeah. By the way, I noticed, I don't, it's not in your rundown, but uh, Dropbox has finally responded to the drop in price at, uh, at uh, uh, Microsoft you know what, Drive. I, I've been meaning to write a Dropbox's business plan is, you know, based on nothing kind of story for a long time. And this kind of shows you that because the Dropbox thing amounts to the same thing that you, you know, the same price for Office 365 home premium, except with that, you get five copies of Office to install on all your computers right. and Macs, you know. And, and you um, get um, the one terabyte for each of the five users, right? right? Not just one terabyte, exactly. Right. right. And that's Dropbox's problem and Box's problem. Yeah. And everyone who is not Microsoft, Google, or Amazon, basically, um, these guys can give that away because they're trying to sell you on their other stuff. They want you to, yeah. in their ecosystems. Dropbox is just selling the That's storage. Their business. It's nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's unfortunately, it's not sustainable. Yeah, I wonder now. So uh, for a long time, until yesterday, in fact, it was a hundred yeah. bucks a year for te for a hundred meg a hundred megabytes. Now at least it's a terabyte for. They've bucks moved from a, a you know five and a quarter inch floppy to a three and a half inch yeah. floppy. Basically, yeah. I mean, I just I know a lot of people use Dropbox. I just don't understand why. Yeah, <laughs> you know. There's, there are so many other solutions, and you get so much oh, yeah. more from uh, OneDrive or, or Google Drive yep. or Flickr, for crying out loud. Know. You know, know, even Yahoo's giving you a terabyte for free. I know. Yep. Yeah, really. Hard drives are cheap. Yep. Didn't, did, who was it? Does it was Seagate? Somebody just announced an eight terabyte hard drive. Yeah. That's really, crazy. a single disk hard drive. <laughs> well, I, don't, I doubt it's I a single I know it's multiple platter. platters, yeah. but I mean yeah. a single. Single drive. Yeah. Eight terabytes. Eight terabytes. Crazy. I, I don't remember the year, but you know, ten years ago ish, I wrote a post that was like, "There be storage here," and it was a <laughs> a one terabyte uh, unit, but it was multiple hard drives in yeah. it. But the thing was, you know, hum like a lunchbox sized, yeah, uh, weighed probably thirty pounds or whatever. And I bought two of them so I could, you know, bring one to offsite as a backup, you know, and switch and swap them out like that. A thousand dollars a piece. A terabyte is still an awful lot. I hate to tell. A terabyte, one terabyte, is still a ton of storage. It I can is. fit all my photos I've ever taken, all my digital photography, easily in a terabyte. All the music I've downloaded in a terabyte, easily. Oh, yeah. In fact, yep. both. So eight. Yep. Anyway, that's why Dropbox uh, finally had to respond because it's. Uh, you're right. First of all, these business model, the business model for OneDrive is different, but also drives yep. are cheap. Uh, so Azure I, has a, a no SQL service and uh, yeah. search and a price drop. Tell us all about it, Mary yeah, Jo Foley. Yeah. How did you know this Why was my Why do you assume idea? that's Mary Jo's story? <laughs> 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 I, 
<laughs> I'm just giving it to her. Just a guess. <laughs> just a guess. Yeah. So this is this is actually pretty interesting. Microsoft has been rolling out a number of new services on Azure, which is their public cloud. And last week, right after Windows Weekly, they rolled out two new ones. They rolled out a NoSQL database service that they actually built themselves using some of the technology from Microsoft Research. Will you explain uh, what NoSQL is? No. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. It's a I cannot do it justice. I, I can't either, and you can Google it. Go to Wikipedia. <laughs> but my my general sense is it's a response to the complexity of SQL and, and MySQL and SQL servers, and it's, it's a flat file, not kind of non relational. I think right. Database. It's a non relational database, yeah. and it lets you store other kinds of data in other kinds of formats than than the typical tabular type format. Um, and you know, there's been other NoSQL databases that people have been running on Azure in virtual machines. So it's not the very first time there's NoSQL on Azure. But what's interesting is this is Microsoft's own NoSQL service. So that's pretty cool in and of itself. They're going to have the um, software development kits available and put those out to open source so that they can stay in sync with what's going on in the NoSQL world. Um, and this service, I should say, is called Azure Document DB. Um, because, so if because you see that, that rolls off the tongue. <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah, because that's a really easy to remember name. No, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that that was one of the two services they announced. Uh, the other one is a full text search service. And you know, when people hear Microsoft's building a search service, you immediately think Bing. This is not Bing, though. This is a uh, technology built on the Elasticsearch distributed uh, search technology. This is actually really useful. Yeah, it is really useful. So if you're a mobile developer and you want to incorporate full text search inside of your app, you'll be able to use this service that's hosted on Windows Azure. And uh, you can do it to index data, start start is issuing searches. Wow, that was a mouthful. <laughs> and, and so that's those are both pretty interesting new services that they have there. Uh, just, just more hints of what's coming out on Azure these days, which is pretty cool. I remember, do you remember the program X1 that was, um, God, it was so great. Uh, it was just kind of search, local, fast text search of everything. What like was it called? X1. It was in whatever's in your documents, yeah. your email. Uh, the, yes. You type the first letter and it would populate me. It was like so fast. Immediately with everything that matched second letter, boom, yeah, yeah, third yeah. letter. Boom. It was just an indexer basically, but. Well, but it was, but it did, but it went into files. But it was files. fast. No, you're right. It was really fast. And that's really useful. I, and I, uh, that's what I think mm. of when I think of, of, of this, this text search. The idea that you could have a so centralized fast search of I documents. I thought about that X1 in a long time. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. good, good little, yep. good little thing. Yeah, it is. All, it's all in the indexing, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, Microsoft added an index server to right. you know Windows Server, and then eventually added it to client, obviously. Right. I, but I can't in Windows Search, you know. But God, how long ago was X1? Ten yeah. years. I think <laughs> they were still. Yeah. I think they're still around. I think they now do it in enterprise. Right. Um, hmm. uh, X1.com is still around, and. Uh, Find email files and SharePoint data fast. It's a unified search and e-discovery for virtual cloud and hybrid environments. I, I'm thinking that's pretty close to what Microsoft's just announced for, for Azure, right? Pretty similar. Got me on that. Yeah. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I know people are just starting to kick the tires on these two services, and I've been seeing kind of mixed uh, feelings about some of them. So we'll, we'll see how these evolve, I think. Yeah. Right, it makes sense. I mean, this is what you should build into Azure. Right, right. I mean, yeah. they already have um, HD Insight on Azure, which is their Hadoop service on Azure. They've got a machine learning service on right. Azure. They've got an Internet of Things service on Azure. So they're building out all these things that they're hoping people who are developing apps could use, you know, kind of spin up, spin down when they need them, incorporate them into their apps as they build them on Azure. They're right. just trying to make it a more enticing development environment for all types of applications. That's the goal. And to that end, they've lowered or are going to lower the price for SQL or SQL Azure users. Yeah, yep. Um, so Microsoft's got a, a bunch of new database tiers for the cloud coming out uh, in September, early September. 
And when they announced this back in April, they put out a whole pricing chart and they said, here's where we're going to price this. Um, and now uh, they're going to cut the prices for two of those, the premium and the standard tiers, by 50 percent of what they announced. And so I'm not going to give you the exact prices because some uh, there's all these different caveats about how it's priced. But they're also going to make um, hourly billing available for these tiers and they're upping their service level agreement guaranteed uptime from 99.95 to 99.99. So they're making a lot of very positive tweaks as they move forward towards uh, the introduction of these new database tiers. Stay tuned for, for more on those too. You guys experiencing any heating with your Surface Pros, your, your threes? <laughs> A lot of complaints. No, about that. but I mean, you know, the one I have is the <laughs> i5 version. So, oh, it's the uh, i7 one that's really heating up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense. It uh, does. Well, it <laughs> does it. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's too better. <laughs> two two times. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, if I mean, I don't know why. I don't know. Yeah. There are lots of laptops with i7 processors. Haswell particularly is a. Mm -hmm. Relatively, yeah. cool. I, but this is this is a particularly thin machine, and yeah. and it's hard not to look at this yeah. and wonder. There are no fans. You know, in it. Are there fans in it? No, it's, there is a gigantic fan. Oh, <laughs> um, and that's the thing. I mean, this is not a fanless device, I and mean, this is a, it gets really warm. I mean, you can play a game on here on, on an i5 version. You can feel it. You know, the the air starts pumping, the fan cranks on. Uh, um, you know, it gets warm, and people have reported that the i7 version in particular gets very hot, as, as you know, maybe you would but, expect for a device like that. But that's the thing. I think that uh, maybe the people are being um, chicken little because, I mean, it's normal. These uh, Lots of laptops with, uh, you know, they get hot. You, they're surprisingly hot, but it's not it's not a, 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 a yeah. broken. You, you could fry an egg on this thing, Leo, but I, I think <laughs> the issue is that there is an issue, or there is a flaw or, or some kind of a problem, however you want to say it, where uh, it reboots and the screen that comes on is like a firmware type screen that has a picture of a thermometer. <laughs> so oh, that's, uh, yeah. Okay. You don't have to be a sign language yeah. expert to think my <laughs> machine is clearly yeah. overheating. Um, and Microsoft's explanation is that uh, they shouldn't be seeing that it's not overheating and they're going <laughs> to issue a, So, you know, it's, it's not overheating. So we the fix is the fix. to yeah. stop showing the error message. Is that it? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Well, to, no, no, it's obviously to prevent the reboot in the first place. Um, right. In other words, it's know. it's being the because you know, all C, all all systems do this. If the CPU gets too hot to protect themselves, mm -hmm. they sure. will either shut down, abort, yeah, uh, or a reboot is actually a good way because by the time you've rebooted, even if it's a fast reboot, you've cooled off a lot. Right. Um, but but the threshold for that those actions might have been set too low, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, you know, Surface Pro Three is tough because it's uh, it's a new kind of machine in many ways. It, it, obviously, it's an ultrabook, yeah. really, but it's you it know, it's designed to be used like a tablet too. And so, I think people have high expectations. Right. They're fairly expensive devices. Um, I've been using it to holding. steam my milk for my espresso. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, it, it's, uh, that's it's also a great way they to hold it in their there. hands. Right. Don't well, you that's think, the thing. I, I so it's, it's kind of you yeah, don't it's, normally it's, touch it's it. Out on your hands. So yeah. you don't know how hot it is. It's normal. Right. Right, I have a, I have my um, Acer S7 is an is an i7 it's hot. based, but I don't touch it. No. I don't go and gra pick yeah. it up by the right. back, right? So I don't know. Maybe it's really hot too. But I, when you're it holding is. this, that's when you're feeling that. It thing. is. Yeah. yeah. I love Paul's. I just noticed your graphic on the on the story you wrote about this. <laughs> He's got a picture He's of the so Surface good. Pro with a blazing chestnuts crust. roasting <laughs> on an open <laughs> surface. <laughs> Jack Frost. I like that. Nice, Paul. That's good, right? Nice. Little, little Christmas Yule log action. Yeah, and this is another flaw we should mention that Microsoft is stressing that not many people are having. And I'll say, just like I said about the security update, maybe not many are having it, but I've, I'm hearing from quite a few yeah. people. So I, maybe I'm hearing from all of them. I don't uh, know. The world is full of whiners. He's a bunch of yeah. whiners. Stop whining. Well, uh, I, I bet mean, they're going to fix Mary Jo and I are ostensibly <laughs> professional whiners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, me too. I do it for a living. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, bet, I bet they fix this with the next patch Tuesday, but yeah. they they won't guarantee that or say that publicly. Yeah. yeah. On or before, yeah. Our show today brought to you by ZipRecruiter.com. We'll have Paul and Mary back in a moment to talk about China. Fine China. Spode. China. No. <laughs> also the kill switch. And uh, Paul's got the new phone. Yay. Finally. Yay. We'll talk about that.
just a bit. But first, a word from ZipRecruiter.com. ZipRecruiter solves a problem a lot of businesses, including our own, uh, have had, where you, you know there's plenty of job boards out there, but which job board is the right place to list your job? Um, it really, uh, you know, some boards are better than others for different kinds of uh, purposes. ZipRecruiter solves this by just posting it to everywhere <laughs> with one click of the mouse. Gee, that seems kind of obvious. It's a great idea. I think they just got a big round of funding, too. Zip, visit ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows if you want to learn more. Zip, let me just have to spell it right here. Recruiter.com slash Windows. You'll see uh, that you can post a 50-plus job. What is wrong with me? I cannot spell today. 50-plus job sites. There we go. With one click of the mouse. And the social networks, too. LinkedIn and Facebook. Twitter. Uh, it's it's really a, a sweet way to do it. But you might say, well, that's all well and good. Great. It, I click once, and then now what do I do? Because I'm going to get billions of resumes. Well, they also help you organize it. They help you create a branded jobs page, a career page, too, for your company that goes on your company's website. They have their own database of resumes they've been collecting, and uh, that's free to search. It's also great for mobile job seekers. They can... They can uh, the pages that uh, they create for you, your jobs page, look great on any size screen. It is the fast way to find great candidates in any city or any industry nationwide. You post watch once and you, you watch those qualified candidates just roll into their easy-to-use interface. They'll help you rate the uh, reviews, screen the candidates, rate the resumes, and hire the right person fast. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by 200,000 businesses, 200,001 if you include mine. Right now, you could try it for free for four days. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. Give it a try. I'd like to thank Windows. I'm sorry, ZipRecruiter for supporting uh, Windows Weekly. A great advertiser and a great product. Just got a big vote of confidence. They've been doing very well for most. Investors, I think they raised sixty million, something like that, some big amount of money. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Folier, we're talking Windows, Windows Weekly, um, Windows Phone, the fifteen twenty, the ten twenty, and the nine twenty are now getting cyan. Leo, this one's going to hurt you personally. I, I well, okay, <laughs> just to so. This is so convoluted. But you remember, I have a fifty twenty. I loved that fifteen twenty. I loved it yeah. like a child, and sure. uh, and 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 I listened. A large, big headed child. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got a big head, so it worked, as we all do. Uh, mm -hmm. And I I I listened to you, Paul, and you said, you know, if you want to see Windows uh, eight point mm -hmm. phone eight one uh, update, you can. Uh, you okay. just join the developer program. It's free. Microsoft encourages this, so I did it. But then Microsoft. Uh, I appreciate you offloading the blame to me. Oh no, I'm going to blame Daniel Rubino. <laughs> then, but uh, then no, yeah. but that was all approved, and then Microsoft decided well, to hold up the firmware update because of some compatibility issues. Right. I mean, I, I mean, Daniel and I and, and anyone else who recommended this was, of course, forwarding Microsoft's information because what they said was, if you use the developer preview program to get Windows Phone 8.1 on your device early. No worries. Yeah. When the public version ships with the firmware update, which is called Cyan, yeah. uh, you will be able to get that at that time yeah. from your character normally. Like, there will yeah. be no problem. Um, however, when the 1520 became the first Windows Phone handset in the United States to get Cyan and Windows Phone uh, 8.1 publicly, Microsoft discovered there was a problem. Whoops. And so they started blocking it uh, on those devices and said that they would look at issuing a fix. It actually wasn't a sure thing that and this was going to happen. I loved the new uh, Win Windows Phone 8.1 update because I loved the the folders. I mean, there were some really nice features. but And Cyan yeah. had some very nice features. I was yes. anxious to get them. Yep. So Daniel so, Rubino told me, oh, it's no problem. You get the Nokia software uh, recovery tool uh, and you run it. And you basically reset your phone to uh, its original from the factory yep. state. Mm -hmm. You'll lose your data, but back it up first. There's an easy backup, and I did all that. Um, and then, uh, and then you'll get immediately. You'll get pushed to an update for both Windows 8.1 and Phone 8.1 and Cyan. And you can get back on the developer preview program. You can restore your backup and all that. Yep. Yeah. I, by the way, I did the same thing uh, before we went to 
Barcelona. I was excited to see one of the phones I had got the update publicly. I wanted to see it. I wanted to get the firmware update. Um, I did exactly what you just described. It worked fine. And I used that phone the whole month. You yeah. Know, color photos with that phone. I, you know, uh, I still don't know. It could very well be something I did. I, I don't know what happened, but I bricked mine. Uh, yeah. And and by the way, I was told again and again by Nokia folks and users and even a Nokia engineer who was sitting here in the room, you cannot brick this phone. Or you just have to go into recovery and it I, won't. I'm not, I'm not saying you're the only person on earth that this has ever happened to, but it <laughs> is. Pretty close. It's very rare. It's hard to do. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what uh, hoo-ha said. <laughs> Right. He said it's it could happen if you just got it the yeah. right the exact right wrong time. Uh, you could right. have clobbered right. the recovery firmware as well as the regular firmware. Uh, or and to me, I don't even think it's that. I think it's a complete coincidence. Like the phone, yeah. the I phone had I a physical failure. It just failed. Yeah. yeah, kind of a random thing. Right. So I can't test this on my fifteen twenty because I've already done all those upgrades. But uh, I do have a ten twenty, and so. Uh, on the developer preview program, like almost all my phones. And so today I did do this update. It was very quick because all it did was put Cyan on there. It didn't have to do any of the other stuff. And so it's nice. if you've ever upgraded Windows Phone, you know that sometimes this can take a little while. You know, the phone uh, res resets, you get the gears, the line goes across, you know, it takes a little while. Um, this took, I, I didn't time it. In fact, it, took, it, it was so quick, I sort of didn't think to look at it because I knew it would take a little while. And when it, by the time I looked at it, it, it had to have been less than 20 minutes, possibly even less than 10. It was very quick. And uh, I haven't had time to really use it a lot, but it's um, it worked. I mean, so that doesn't, I know that doesn't mean success for everybody, but um, the 1520, now the 1020. So the, the 1520 um, got Cyan publicly through AT&T back in uh, late, yeah, late July. Now what this means is the 1020 has it on AT&T. And they've also released it on the uh, 920. And so I don't know if the 920, I'm sorry, on T-Mobile in Germany. So I don't know whether the 920 on T-Mobile in Germany are, already had access to this. But if you're on the developer preview and have any one of these three devices, now you can upgrade. And it works as it would normally. And so this is sort of, you know, months ago when we talked about it, get Windows Phone 8.1 now in early April, this was how we expected this to work. And so they've done it at least for these three devices i anticipate they'll do it for the other devices and if they don't you know i just would say uh, your experience notwithstanding um normally this process it's not super quick but it's basically ever ever free you know for the most part for most people <laughs> you know and, and and also to be fair i mean i you know i kind of gray marketed this phone i wanted to uh, i wanted an unlocked one so i went to new egg right. and I got it, and you had to have it, if you were going to get it to work in the U.S. on T-Mobile with LTE, you had to get a North American variant, and I'm pretty sure the one I got was intended for Mexico, because it was in mm -hmm. Spanish, and uh, Newegg has said, you know, 15 days is, you know, the farthest, we'll, we'll, we'll back it up, it's, you know, it's not our fault, right. and then I don't know what's going to happen now, but. <laughs> Newegg probably said, wait, what did you do with this thing? <laughs> I didn't and even. Why do you want to get I, I just went to Newegg and they said, you know, after 15 days, yeah. we don't. Yeah, yeah. That's that's your problem. Talk to Nokia. And I have been talking to Nokia Care USA uh, on the Twitter. And uh, I can, I, I'm happy to ask someone. No, to I don't want to. I don't want to pull people. strings. I don't, I don't like. No, that. no, this is not. I want to have the experience of what a, a normal person would have. Oh, then you're the frustration, <laughs> you're just, the anxiety, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The disappointment. Let me sadness, show you what that experience looks the like. The grim, do you brutal have a reality. Chirping sound <laughs> Seriously, I do want to do that. I don't. I don't. I and I never want to pull, you know, the no, do no, you no, know no. who I am thing because. Uh, no, no, that's not the point. I mean, but the you are talking about this publicly. Um, I've done this kind of thing. You know, people write me and say. I just had this awful experience with Windows Phone or with, of course, now by saying this, everyone's going to write me with this stuff. But, you know, depending on the on the situation, I mean, I'll often forward things along to people just to say, look, uh, someone needs to take care of this guy because what has happened here is unusual and he's not getting the support he should be getting from all the right channels. Like this is, this should not be, this well, is, Well, I don't know like what the, a consumer um, would do. I guess a consumer would call Nokia. Well, you know, what's that column they have in newspapers where people, you know, the yeah, consumer yeah. advocate? You know, yeah, I'll call Michael Finney on Channel it's, it's 7 like that. and it's, see it's if not, he can help it's me. It's not about pulling strings. It's about making <laughs> right. sure that the right thing happens. Squeaking the wheel. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not. But he, you now, know, Do you understand who he is? It's no. <laughs> no. This is the right thing yeah, to do yeah. for anybody. We don't need to spend any time on it. It's not, it's not, okay. it's not an issue. 
I'm um, upset by this, Leo. Yeah, but you but you uh, got the uh, cyan. So uh, and they are put and anybody who was patient. See, I was impatient. And it, even though you Leo. did develop a preview, you should start Leo, getting cyan something. now. Leo. Yeah. Anyone who in April put up Windows Phone 8.1 on their phone through a developer preview program. Patient is not a word for these people. <laughs> I know. This is patient is I'm not. I'm not. You're, I know. You're not unusual. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, let's yeah. not pretend that you're some extreme, you know, you've done something great. I mean, I, 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 by the way, I did the day that the 1520 came out, whatever that day, the 1520 update came out, whatever day that was, in uh, uh, July 24th or whatever. I did what you did. I was even more impatient than you. So. <laughs> I did it instantly. I at least looked at it for a week thinking. Yeah, you actually, you if anything, <laughs> you deliberated like Chamberlain I, over this yeah, thing. I so. kept pushing the update yeah. now, no. Update now, no. And it, it no, is you were not, currently you were not impatient. on AT&T <laughs> only or T-Mobile in, in Germany. But that that means that the the floodgates have opened, right? And just I think gradually, so. I, yeah. I, it, it's... I mean, I can't say for sure, but it would be bizarre to me that they would support only a handful of phones on certain carriers. I, th I think this is the beginning of the we fixed the problem. Yeah. 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 Huawei has abandoned Windows Phone. Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Huawei, one of the uh, Chinese uh, phone manufacturers. I don't think they have much of a presence in the U.S. No, they do not. No. Uh, but Windows Phone is big in China. Is am I right or no? No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> so, and that's the problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nobody no wanted problems. It. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you need, they need every OEM they can get right now because that they're they're making a really concerted effort to sign up more of them. They that's why yeah. they dropped the price of the phone OS to zero, and they signed up. I think fourteen new vendors once they did that i don't know if huawei was one of those 14 or no not, they, but they were two years ago they were already they, there they've been, on, okay. they've been on board for a while yeah okay so yeah in fact i if no, i'm not, not i good. could be wrong but i believe that they came online at the same time as nokia I, that long ago I oh think, wow I, really huh i think so i could be wrong about that but um archos you know today just announced a new windows phone device i'm not sure if they were one mm. of the 14 yeah. that we knew about already but yeah, those guys leaving now is, yeah, it's tough timing. Yep. Could we make it any cheaper? <laughs> what if yeah. we just we pay you $5 per handset? How does that sound? <laughs> well, it is free, uh, or is yeah. it or not? It is. It is, yeah. Yep. yep. Now, granted, I mean, most of their sales would have occurred before that licensing took hold, but right. they apparently have not done well with Windows Phone, yeah. Right. And, you know, I, I kind of wondered why they couldn't do what HTC just did, which is take the same phone that you're making yeah. for Android. And now with the new changes that they made in Windows Phone, you can take that handset and put Windows Phone on it. Why not? Right. I'm sorry. Zero dollars. Thank you. I apologize. Right. Zero dollars. Zero right. dollars. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be precise. It's the new free. By the way, Leo, I have somebody tweeting to you right now, Nashville WP Dev, saying, I guarantee I can fix Leo's phone or I'll give you guys 20 bucks. Okay. I'll, I'll ship it over to you, Nashville. I think you should. <laughs> I guarantee you can't. But okay. Yeah. Let him try it. <laughs> I guarantee you can't. Let him try I do it. kind of wish I could get my hands on it. I feel like this is solvable, but. I feel like it is too, <laughs> but it's not. I and I, and like I said, Huha was sitting right across from me. He's from Finland. No, right? He is an engineer at Nokia. Right. Uh, he was one of the people uh, Microsoft acquired in the hire, and he's still working there, which means he must be good. And he said, "Oh no, you can fix it," and he couldn't. So mm, yeah. it doesn't matter. It's just eight hundred dollars down the drain. What do I? Get? Yeah, no, yeah, don't worry um, about it. I don't need it. <laughs> Hmm, okay. Well, Spotify. I'll use that to start a bonfire. That <laughs> put that in. I, I light my cigars with that. Spotify <laughs> uh, is now free yeah. on Windows Phone. Yeah. What? How much? What do you get for free? Everything? No, so back in January, I'm sorry, back in December of 2013, Spotify made it possible to stream their service through the Android and iOS versions of their app you know, for free. And uh, now it's August. And so Windows Phone gets that capability. So, you know, it's ad supported. And you don't get, you know, the high quality, um, 
stream, you don't get the ability to download songs and, and play them offline, obviously, with the free version. Um, and so this is one of those good news, bad news type things. I mean, it's obviously if you're a Spotify user and you have Windows Phone, you've been waiting for this for a long time. Good news. Uh, bad news is, um, man, it took like nine months, <laughs> you know, yeah. past the other platforms. And that's, you know, again, this is one of those things that highlights the problem sometimes with Windows Phone. We're not exactly at the forefront of a lot of developers' minds. And um, this this kind of thing kind of highlights that, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, California Kill Switch. Uh, Jerry Brown has signed it into law. Uh, this is something that uh, both Android and uh, and iPhones have had for some time, but you have to turn it on. Yep. Uh, the idea is that you can remotely uh, disable a phone. Right. Um, does what is the kill switch situation on the Windows Phone side? I know, but my fifteen twenty is apparently already killed. Yeah, so I can't See, check that. You're, we're on the leading edge, Leo. <laughs> um, one year before required, um, you have managed to. I, you know, I thought it was odd when at the bill signing, moment. Jerry Brown said, "I will now flip the switch and kill Leo's phone." Right, remote. <laughs> it should make that noise too. Um, what was that? <laughs> oh, it's my phone dying. But if Calif as California goes, so does the world. Because oh, yes. if you're going to sell a phone in California. Uh, you're not going to make a separate <laughs> the California well, edition. Right, and that's that's why this is important. So right. I, like Minnesota did this and nobody noticed, but then California did it and it's like, okay, this is important. Now we have because to do it. yeah. the country follows, the world follows. Right. Um, but Windows Phone has become, this, right? I mean... It's coming. Uh, they, You know, Windows Phone has the kind of find, find your phone type stuff. Which, and can you know, I kill it remotely are. if I find it? Um, the way it works today is you can do it through policy if, you're, if your phone is managed, um, a kill oh. switch... Functionality is coming in the next version of Windows Phone. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, and finally, uh, I hear you got a little something, something. Mary Jo yeah, so got Mary, it at Mary the Joe event had this last week. Yeah. As you recall. Yep. Did she send it to um, you? Hmm? No. No. You, I did not send. Did my you name. give I up still your? Have mine. You do. You like it. <laughs> She's got that peekaboo cover. I love. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get a cover because I didn't go to the event. Um, oh. So I was away, but they were nice enough to send me one, and it was waiting for me here when I got home. So. Uh, you know, probably next two, three weeks, I'll, I'll use it um, and uh, write about it and we'll see how it goes. I mean, I, I'm most interested in the camera. I've only played with that a little bit. I, I find the the post picture taking editing functionality to be, to be interesting. Um, okay. They have their own camera app, which I think is weird. You know, it's got a, uh, <laughs> you know, yet another Flipboard type app, which yeah, is the, the, you know, whatever. the blink feed. I, I took that off right away on the yeah, I don't uh, care about Android stuff, side. But, but you know, it, it's 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 a nice. Uh, Don't you nice like the size. feel though? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's I a beautifully made feel. device. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It just feels nice in your hand. You know, it does. It's metal. And you know what's crazy? Paul and I was talking about this on I am the other day. The this phone weighs almost the exact same as the Icon. Right. It, and it's longer in length. I think it's uh, I forget it's how much tall, longer, but taller and a it's little taller. Less wide or uh, yet this phone to me feels so much lighter because yeah. of the way and, and the weight this is, is distributed. I, I love Nokia devices and I I, I I almost promote them to people. Like I really I don't really cheerlead for a lot of things, but I really like Nokia devices. But mm -hmm. if there's a legitimate complaint that one could make about many Nokia phones, it's that they they're dense. They're dense yeah. like like a holiday cake. You know, like a cake. like they're like they're heavier than they look. Phones. The fruit cake you know? of phones. I like fruit that. cake. Yeah, it's like a fruit cake. So the the uh, the HTC phone, when you hold it in your hand, even though it's basically the same weight, it's just a little lighter, but you know, basically yeah. the same as the Icon. Yep. Feels lighter. It feels better in your hand. The the Icon is it's dense like a brick. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it the, there's something about the weight distribution that makes it feel more awkward and heavy in your hand. And obviously, you get used to it. I mean, we're, when you use a bunch of different phones, you can make these kinds of comparisons. The truth is most people buy a phone and use it and whatever the awkwardness or weight or whatever, you don't notice it because you just use it every day. Yeah. Um, but it is a very real thing. And I think, you know, the Icon is not exactly a, a phone that most women would want to use. I would think it's very masculine in the sense that it's you know, brickish and sharp edges and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> right? I, I, I don't know about I'm that. Not a woman, I, I just... I'm just guessing. Yeah, I just I just re remember when I first got it, I used to have to prop my hand up on the table to use it because it was heavy. Yes. 
Like yeah. it really was heavy and I'm yeah. used to it now, but man, going to this phone from that phone, I'm like, Oh, why can't they make a device like this? Um, right. I've been well, using this for a whole week now uh, as my only phone. And the right. only, I've had a couple weird things happen. The one really odd thing. Um, and Paul, I'll be interested if you can figure out why mm -hmm. this is, uh, when I take a picture and save it to the photos app here on this phone, and then I try to use it inside of another app, like for example, in untapped or somebody else said this happens to them with WhatsApp, you go mm -hmm. to take the picture and, and put embed it in a message or a post or whatever. And it turns the image on its side. So you're saying it, you take the picture from inside the app. You don't take the picture, then go to the app. No, like, you, you know, sometimes you can take a picture first and then yeah. when you're going to post, right. you, you go to your photo library, you take that picture and, and you, you apply it. it or whatever. Okay. Right. So when I, every time I do that, the photos turned on its side. And when I use the app, the camera app inside the app itself, it doesn't do that. Okay. I got you. I like Paul's you know eye I mean? roll on that one. I know. He's probably <laughs> like, what is he trying, trying to say? To... I'm not explaining okay. it well, but. Um, no, no, I, I understood what you said. All right. So let me, I will. I don't know if that's a driver issue, if it's. Firm, a right. firmware I mean, I just, did, I just inserted a picture in a text message and it was correct. So it was okay. Yeah, but it I can might tell be you, a third. I'll try and tell. I've been I, my beers have been turned on their side and it hasn't <laughs> been fun. So when you take a picture <laughs> of a beer, do you hold the camera in the kind of like, you know, portrait yeah. mode like this, or do you? Yep. You do this okay. way. Yep. All right, I'll, yeah. I'll play with that. Yeah, but it, otherwise, I've I, it's been really great. Um, I love the dot yeah. case. I, I think it's really a nice form factor. The screen has a really great resolution, really easy to read. Um, right. the, and you know, the other thing, the camera is very fast on this, on the icon, when you click the camera button and yeah. you start it's to like take one, a picture, you wait. Two, and <laughs> yeah. then it comes back. Yeah. No, yeah. you're right. But That's the, definitely the true. images are so much nicer when I take them with the icon than with this one. And you know, it's is a 20 minute across the board or? pretty much across the board. I've taken a couple pretty good images um, with the new phone, but it's nothing compared to the icon. I haven't done any side by sides, but you know, going outside, I went into Boston, took a couple photos um, just with this camera. I thought they were fine. I mean, you know, any yeah. digital yeah. camera, it seems like if you're outside on a clear sunny day, those pictures are going to come out great for the most part. Um, I'm curious about that. I, I, the, the editing stuff is weird to me. You know, the the yeah. way you can blur parts of it later or do kind of time shift effects and stuff. Um, yeah. That's kind of interesting. But. So apparently yeah. uh, Windows 7 handles EXIF oddly. You're still on Windows 7, right? <laughs> nice. Why is my picture sideways? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and I do remember this was a, an issue with, uh, as I remember, with Windows, uh, some Windows well, software. I see this in Windows Phone. You know, you, you could go out for a day in Barcelona, for example, take 100 photos. And you know, some you turn the camera on, some of them, some you don't, and then you import them to the computer, and some of them are correct and some aren't. You know, yeah. and if and the software that you know, if you use Windows uh, Photo Gallery, one of the options you can use on import is to automatically rotate, and it must look at that EXIF data to determine which way it should yeah. be rotating. Yeah, there's a photos. there's a flag saying how it's rotated, and it's not always right, and that's what's weird about it. So yeah, sometimes so the phone could we'll, be broken, like or the you know the accelerometer. Yeah, but phone how would you know? Yeah. I mean, right. how would you really mm -hmm. know? Right. It doesn't do it all the time, though, just right sometimes. Yeah. But, you, but yeah. you, you have to go through and look at them because right. yeah. there'll be these weird ones you know, that are sideways. I, it's probably just uh, you've got a little stuck uh, thing in your accelerometer. It's like stuck. a rotation yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's really odd. And now now I'm seeing people on Twitter saying, one, one guy who's listening to the show, Frederick, said, my Nokia 930 turns my photos the same way. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Odd. No one wants a sideways beer picture, guys. No, it looks Just, like it's pouring out. It looks no, like it nobody. Does. Oh, the humanity. Nobody wants nobody that. Nobody <laughs> wants that. Uh, you know, we were talking about Huawei dropping Windows Phone. And as I remember, Huawei is at least partially owned by the Chinese uh, military. Yeah. And it could be part of the overall concerted, it's very clear, concerted no. anti Microsoft bias in China. Oh, that's interesting. I just realized that. Oh, and when another I, you know, thing, I, we're not going to sell Windows phones. Mm. Sure. Yeah, huh. take that. You know. Yeah. 
Well, they only sold like 17 of them, so it's okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, when I, when I wrote this story about this, uh, originally I, I commingled that company with the other big Chinese uh, cell phone maker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? ZTE, I think. Yeah. No, it's, no, no, not that one. I'm sorry. Like Xiaomi or whatever. Oh, it is. Xiaomi. Shumps. Yeah, they're not. They're, they're, yeah, Xiaomi. Those guys are actually really interesting, and I wish it had been them because their story is much more interesting because that, that guy literally explicitly copies yeah. Apple and Steve Jobs. He even and says so, one more thing in his presentation. He, he dresses he wears a like black Steve Jobs. Neck and the one more, yeah. yeah. But if you look oh, yeah. at their phones and their tablets, they're it. actually beautiful. The sh yeah, I have, we beautiful. have a Mi 4. Do you? Yeah. Uh, they're really nice. Not only is it, well, it's, nice it, it looks very much like a, a Galaxy mixed with an iPhone. But you know what? The yeah. screen is the best I've seen in a long time. Mm. It's a gorgeous IPS yeah. screen. And uh, Jason, who's I think reviewed those guys, it, uh, says it's very snappy. It's a good phone. Yeah, if they if they come to the United States, I bet they'll do really really well. Yeah, because the price. This is another case like uh, the One Plus, where the price is half right. the, the price of uh, these high end uh, flagship phones. My my, I love my uh, this this HTC One. I mean, sorry, the, uh, not HTC. The One Plus One. <laughs> They're all one. Yeah. They're all, yeah. <laughs> this one. This one. Uh, it's 350 bucks for 64 gigs of storage, and it's a great phone, five-inch screen. Yeah. The, it makes me think that we're being overcharged a little bit. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> mm. I'm surprised no one's looking into that. Um, we're so stupid, you know. And then, the States, and then, we're, so, we're so dumb. We're so dumb. We're and then so China, dumb. which for a while was doing a version of Linux called the Red OS, I think. Yeah. Yep. They they now they're uh, they still they now they're saying we're not going to do uh, anything Microsoft we're going to do our own I this OS. Whole, right? I, this China thing is awesome. Yeah. I, I love this. What's the deal? I love this picture. <laughs> <laughs> I so you know China, you were just saying China has this thing with the United, with the United States in general and with the United States companies and with Microsoft specifically. There's an antitrust investigation. Um, I'm, I'm actually surprised nobody kind of drew this same conclusion, but there's a, there's an interesting fact about China, which I think explains why they're going after Microsoft in particular, which is, uh, and, and I should say, uh, with regards to Internet Explorer and Windows Media Player, which are those two, you know, bundling technology issues they had with the United States and Europe literally 10 years ago. Um, it's because China is not exactly on the leading edge when it comes to Internet connectivity. And as it turns out, I, th I think the figure is 83% of people who use technology, you know, some form of technology to access the Internet, do it on a PC, not on a phone. And, and in that sense, Microsoft's Windows is thus still dominant there when it comes to Internet access. And so here in the United States, you hear they're going after Microsoft for Internet Explorer? Like, what? what is that? It's, I, I think that's why. I think that's, I think that's part of it anyway. Um, and so this is kind of the blast from the past effect. You know, um, you've got a totalitarian government that's trying to prevent their people from accessing certain information. You know, they have the famous red firewall or whatever. And how do people access this information? Well, they watch videos in Windows Media Player that are, are, come from the web, which they're using, you know, with Internet Explorer. And um, so, you know, it, it's like we've gone back in time. There are a couple of things I would I would say about uh, this. First of all, uh, the, there are plenty of computer engineers in China. They have the expertise to do this. They could absolutely do this. Do their own operating system. Absolutely. And second well, yeah, of all, I was a Ch I remember this. I was a Chinese studies major in college, and one yeah. of the things historically going back to the you know Boxer Rebellion and the early days of uh, imperialism in China, the Chinese mm -hmm. are notoriously xenophobic. Always yes. have been. Um, you know, it's like riding a bike, Leo. Yeah, the China. You know, <laughs> you know the, still... word, the word for China is the Middle Kingdom. It's the center of the world, yeah. and um, and uh, and not uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. There's a billion people there. Um, they have huge resources. I, I have huge respect for China, and well, I, I'm not at all might. surprised to hear them act xenophobically. Um, I'm not surprised that they're trying to develop their own OS. Not at all. Um, they however, have the, they have the means, but it's going to take a long time. And in fact, even their schedule, which I think is baloney, is uh, in, in indicative of how hard this kind of thing is. And so they uh, will supposedly have some kind of a first release for the desktop this fall. But they're saying, you know, it'll be a couple of years before this thing, you know, has the true functional slash whatever 
maturity level of Windows. Yeah. But they also want to adapt it for mobile devices, right. uh, smartphones and tablets. And that's going to take another three to five years past that. And so this isn't something that's happening overnight. Um, well, and also I'd point out that uh, part of the issue, and I, I have not used Windows in Chinese, but or any op, any computer in Chinese. But part of the issue mm -hmm. is the alpha is the language itself, which is uh, ideograph uh, based. Right. It's not letters. Each word is a single ideograph, a single character, and um, that's very different. You know, the keyboards yep. are different. Everything's different. I think it makes perfect sense. And so what I'm saying is it may be more than political. It may it may really be something deep, much more deep than just the Chinese government's mistrust of the United States or a or or a you know, a, a tariff negotiation. This could go much deeper than that. Yeah. No, by the way, I, I agree with that. I just think that um, when you look at their reaction to Microsoft's, you know, say canceling support for Windows XP exactly on the schedule they promised to do years and years ago. <laughs> right. You know, you, you see uh, that's a, a kind of a strange I agree. I agree. I think what they wanted to do was stick with that until their thing was ready. And now, faced with the fact that Microsoft is essentially forcing them to upgrade, I think this is where the pushback started. And Ah, that's interesting. You know, I, I think this the reality is this system, it, it is perfectly understandable that they would want to do this. Just like it's perfectly understandable that Samsung might want to make their own operating system and not rely on a yeah. third party. Yeah. I mean, these yeah. things are understandable, but... They're also extremely difficult and time-consuming, right? And uh, and they're going to get it wrong. I mean, the truth is, they're going to have problems. They're going to be, they they obviously want to develop something that can't be hacked, you know, for, uh, externally. That kind of stuff is doubly hard. I mean, it's it's going to yeah. be very difficult to do what they want to do. I don't know. I mean, I feel like you've got brilliant engineers. You got a yeah. lot of them. Um, you, if you have hopefully the, all of them educated here in the United States, which is fantastic. <laughs> Many of them there. You have a government that's willing to pour as much money as needed into something like this. Sure. You got the resources. You got. It's about talent. Um, I feel like they. There's no reason to say they can't do as well as any U.S. company at this. Maybe even better. Yeah. And you're starting from uh, scratch. So, You've seen yeah. it all. You know uh, what you need to do. You don't have to worry about legacy. I'm, I wouldn't write them off. No, oh, I don't no, think I'm not writing them, them off. off. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just fine. To their reaction now, it's, you know, we're gonna get you in seven years. You know, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's a little early. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <You know>? yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, Toad Sloth in the chat room says, "Have you ever assembled shelves with engineers? It's not fun." <laughs> 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 no, wait, down. No, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> uh, let's take a break. We have uh, we have much more. The back of the book still to come. That's Paul Thorat's tip of the week, his software pick of the week, the enterprise pick of the week, and yes, the beer of the week. And it will be in portrait mode, my friends, <laughs> this beer. But first, a word about uh, the best place to create your next website. And I am talking Squarespace.com. I love Squarespace. We use it for our Twit blog, our uh, company blog. Because it's just so, it's such a pleasure to use, to post to, to uh, work with. Squarespace is the hosting, best hosting ever, always up, never down. Uh, the beauty of having a Squarespace site is you can suddenly get to be the most popular site in the web, and and you know your site would still be responsive. You can't. There's very few sites, very few uh, hosts that do that. I mean, this is these guys have got that down, and but then. They put on top of it, they put the best software. And in fact, that's part of the reason it works. So go to squarespace.com, click the Get Started button, choose your template. There's 25 to start with. Now you might say, well, wait, a template. But now this is not like your, you know, your mother's template. This is, uh, this is a starting point that is using the latest web engineering, HTML5 and CSS and JavaScript to give you a starting point that really is powerful. Mobile responsive, uh, every every Squarespace site looks great on any size screen. Uh, E-commerce is built into all of them. In fact, if you pick a template, I'm looking at modern, uh, no, I'm sorry, Pacific, you can see uh, sites that use it. And it's, and it's all kinds. You know, a lot of people right now are talking about the parallax style. Medium uses it and others. Absolutely, Squarespace totally supports all of the most modern styles. And the beauty of this is the content is so separate from the template 
that if you say next year or next time, hey, I want to do something else, or tomorrow, you just click the button, change the look, the content's all still there. And look how easy it is to get your free trial. All they want is your name, your email, and a password, and you're done. No credit card, nothing else, not your mother's maiden name or your birth date or anything, your social, just the, the basics so that you can create the website because really they believe so thoroughly in what they're doing uh, that they know that once you've tried it, you're going to want to buy. I want you to visit squarespace.com. Do play with it. Uh, you know, really get a sense of what it can do for you. And if you decide after you choose your template and set it up, you can even import, by the way, all your content from your existing site. If you decide you want to uh, do this, it's as little as $8 a month. For, and when you get the annual plan, you get a free domain name as well, which is really nice. Best support in the world, 24-7. By the way, even with a free trial, you get that. Plus a completely redesigned customer help site for easier access to self-help articles and video workshops. There are free apps that let you post, monitor, even monitor metrics. $8 a month. Squarespace.com. Use the offer code Windows to get 10% off that. Squarespace.com. Offer code Windows. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, Leo Laporte. We're talking about Windows, and it's time for Paul's tip of the week. Oh, let me turn yes. this. Yes. So a year ago, um, before we knew about Surface 2 and Surface Pro 2 and what those devices were going to be, it, it, at almost exactly this time frame last year, Microsoft started reducing the price on Surface RT, remember? And uh, I think it was last August, they dropped the price to $350. And I wrote an article at that time, you know, is this the time to buy a Surface RT? And, you know, category, categorically, the answer was no. I mean, to, to my mind, that first generation Surface RT was just never going to have the performance uh, to make any sense at all. I just felt like that device was just the wrong device. And so now it's a year later. Um, we don't know if or, you know, they're going to update the Surface 2. I mean, I, I think the original plan was to have Surface Mini basically replace Surface 2 in the market. And obviously, Surface Pro 3 would replace Surface Pro 2. But now that Surface Mini has been delayed almost certainly until next year at the earliest. Uh, there's this kind of gray area now around the fall. I mean, will there be a new Surface 3, like an RT-based device called Surface 3? We don't know. I don't know. So I haven't heard. Um, but they have dropped the price of Surface 2, which, which is the newer generation uh, RT device, to $350 uh, to start. It's $100 less than the price was just you know a week ago or, a year, or last fall or whatever. And there are three versions of Surface 2. There's the 32 gig version, which is $350. Uh, there's a 64 gig version, I think, for $450. And then there's the 64 gig version with LTE, which I think is $480. Does that sound right? $580, perhaps, something like that. Um, I don't think the upper level versions of Surface 2 make price, it makes sense at those prices, but $350 for Surface 2, this is Chromebook territory, right? This is iPad mini territory. And I think now you could make an argument that that's not a bad deal. It does come with Office. It's a desktop version of Office, but it does come with full Office. Uh, it's a 10-inch screen. It's thin and light. It gets awesome battery life. Um, as long as you know what you're doing and what you're going into, getting into, it's not necessarily a bad deal like Surface RT was last year. I think the only problem here is that that price doesn't include a keyboard. And so the, the Type Cover 2 which is that keyboard cover with the real keys and everything, um, backlit keys, all that kind of stuff, is really expensive. It's $129. And so now when you're talking $480 for this thing with a keyboard, you're out of Chromebook territory. It's a little bit less of, a, uh, of an obvious thing. But if you're just looking for a tablet and you want to experience this kind of Windows Touch thing and you want to do it on a device that's bigger than a mini tablet, um, and you don't mind using maybe a keyboard you already have. If you have a Bluetooth keyboard, whatever, you could obviously use that too. Um, $350, you know, maybe. It's, it's not necessarily such a bad idea. It's a limited time promotion though, isn't it? For the, for I'm not actually sure. Card. Is that what it says? Yeah, I, I saw some people saying it, it just goes through uh, September. I forget the exact okay. date in September. So if you want this, you probably should jump on it. Yeah, you would want to jump now, sure. And actually, uh, Mary Jo has a, a bonus pick. I do. <laughs> You're laughing, but 
you know, well, I, I almost is... I want to read what you wrote here after you're done, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's going to be an event um, coming up this year called the Notepad Conference. <laughs> Everybody who knows me knows I'm a big Notepad fan. Um, it, it's going to be in Minneapolis, and there's even a Kickstarter right now where they're trying to get some money to fund this event. Uh, they want to make it the premier conference for Notepad.exe users. This and guy says he's a no- as Microsoft to the Note- lesser-known conferences for Notepad.exe, <laughs> the, the biggest Notepad conference. This guy says he's a Microsoft Notepad MVP. Is that even a is that even a thing? <laughs> I don't know if that's a real thing. I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> You should become like a notepad ambassador. I should. People were suggesting I keynote this, but um, I I actually don't know enough about notepad you need to pull that. Like up. a notepad tips and tricks session. Yeah. Right. To save a yep. document, type control plus <laughs> S. I saw there's a new text editor for Windows that people mm-hmm. are kind of screaming how fast mm-hmm. it is and how fast the search is. I'll have to find the name of it for you. Yeah. Well, it begins with E E M. Yeah. It's the EM t- something text editor. Hmm. Um, let me see if I can find that article. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. you're looking for that, though. If you want to see what, what's in store at this conference, uh, notepadconf.com. Oh, M editor. M editor from Amora <laughs> Soft. They have a 64 bit version. Apparently, it's just, I read a review, blazingly fast. Oh, Ed Burnett at ZDNet reviewed mm-hmm. it. World's <laughs> fastest text editor, Mary Jo. You look must. at those four people, five people, standing around, <laughs> watching, staring at a monitor that has a text editor on it. <laughs> the text editor. Wow, that, ne- that I, never happens. I've never seen anything so fast. Oh, the better one is those like twenty people jumping in the air. They're so psyched to edit text. <laughs> The one thing I'm a little freaked by is that if you're a teacher or a student, you get twenty dollars off. How much does this thing it's, cost? It's a little pricey. Thirty nine bucks for a year. For a year. A year. What? It's a little, a little what pricey. Thing? And then twenty bucks a year after that. But Mary Jo uses this for her work. I do. This is professional. I would I would go read the ZDNet review by Ed Burnett. All right. All right. I'm going to. If yep. you edit a lot of files on Windows, he says, you owe it to yourself to check out the latest version of M editor. I, I what? <laughs> I think you need to invest in a better text. <laughs> I, I disagree. Yeah. <laughs> but if you I, know, I'm going to read this, I, I just want to read what Mary Jo wrote. You can just tell me if I'm pronouncing this correctly. She wrote notepad conference, exclamation point, exclamation point. Squee. <laughs> <Exclamation point. laughs> she has a squee, squee macro it's okay you know squee. yeah squee. you know what that yeah, is and you know, I, I, mean, I, uh, I do use notepad but i don't use it the way programmers use it so i don't use all the advanced features i just use it because it, it's a simple text editor that doesn't do you use it because when you hit a letter in your keyboard it comes out on the screen Boom. Like that, almost instantly. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like a one to one interaction, you know? <laughs> hey, but like this that. can open files of up to 248 gigabytes. I don't have I any of that big. I can't tell you how many times I needed to do that. <laughs> the, wow. the conference topics are hilarious, too. Yes. You, you should see some of these. Hacking notepad.exe. <laughs> wow. A lap around the notepad menu bar. I'm thinking this might <laughs> be a prank, Mary Jo. I'm not. Yeah, I'm that's not, awesome. I'm not. Uh, but what if it happens? What if? It's the, being what if we held in a brewery or a bar, guys. I, I think it's that tells you everything you need to know right there. <laughs> I think, I think <laughs> Todd when, is when, just when trying is, to get is a little. This and where is this? It's going to be in Minnesota. It's in Minneapolis. Yeah. Minneapolis in November. Oh God, really? November, yeah. guys. Couldn't do this yeah. in July. Right. I would consider going. Look at this. the risks and challenges. The uh, risks and challenges. Receiving an important file greater than sixty-four <laughs> kilobytes. <laughs> that's it. That's that, awesome. That's the risks and the challenge of this fabulous Notepad yeah. conference. Yep, yeah. I'm a text enthusiast, so I I do care about this. Pledge a hundred dollars <laughs> or more. This is uh, you're a wizard of plain text. Consulting comes at you like timestamps to an F5 key. Give back to the community and make this important event happen. You'll get an individually numbered three and a half inch floppy disk for offline storage of text files. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Whether it's a prank or not, I think I think 
they deserve some kind of an award. <laughs> I think if you pledge five thousand dollars or more, you get a notepad icon tattoo. That's a pretty good. Uh, wow. That's a good benefit there. I want to see that. <laughs> it's, a, it's an easy tight tattoo to do. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've we've made Paul stunned. By Are you sure place. you don't want to open files with two point one billion lines? Yeah, no, I, I am actually positive. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I really am. Actually, you know who this is for? This is for IT guys who have to open giant log files and search through them for sure. things they want and stuff yeah. like that. By the way, there is a free right. version of that M editor program. Oh, all right, there you go. <laughs> doesn't, but it doesn't open large files. It only opens 132 gigabytes. Sorry. Yeah, it's, it probably not. It probably has <laughs> yeah. the same limitation as Notepad. I bet. And uh, your software pick of the week, Mr. T. Yeah. So back some months ago, I can't remember anymore when it was, but a few months back. Uh, Google introduced a 64-bit version of Chrome to its uh, non-stable channels, uh, Dev and, um, geez, I just forgot the name of it, uh, Canary. Canary. Yeah, like a canary in a coal mine. So as of today, Chrome 64-bit is now available on Windows only through the stable channel. So if you go to google.com slash Chrome, you'll see a big button, download Chrome. But underneath it is a link, uh, Windows 64-bit, works on Windows 7 and Windows 8. And... It's obviously it opens bigger files. Now, I, I think the uh, oddly enough, the point of this is that it is more secure, it's more reliable, and it performs better than the 32 bit version, according to Google. It's opt in now. Like I said, you don't, you're not going to get it automatically if you just keep upgrading your browser, um, but you can opt to get it. Unlike the 64 bit version of Internet Explorer, it's basically fully compatible with uh, all the extensibility features that you know and love in Chrome. Um, there is an older class of Plugins. I think they're like the Netscape style plugins that are not compatible with this, but basically everything modern works just fine. And um, I've upgraded. I mean, it, it's it's one of those things where it's um, you kind of do it and you don't actually notice anything. You know, you you have to go look and you go into about and yep, it's the 64 bit version, but it just kind of works. And so um, this came out today, and I, I would presume going forward that they will probably make this the default version on 64-bit versions of Windows once they make sure you know enough people have it, it's working correctly and all that kind of stuff. But that just, uh, I believe that literally came out today or maybe last night. That's great. Yep. No one will ever need 64 bits in their browser. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never. Enterprise well, pick of the week, Mary Jo. 128 bits. No 28. <laughs> right. Enterprise pick of the week is RMS, which is Microsoft's rights management service. And the reason I made it the pick of the week this week is Microsoft's doing a whole bunch of updates to RMS, the different variants of it, the Azure RMS and the RMS client. So what, what RMS is, is it's technology that lets you, if you're an IT pro, establish policies about how users can uh, forward, print, copy, and edit documents. It's kind of the journalist's worst nightmare it keeps people from sending me tips because stuff gets rms protected Ooh. yeah so i i really even shouldn't make it my pick no. of the week i shouldn't be espousing Ooh. this but um <laughs> Don't use that. but i am because it's very useful for uh it and in, if you've been to any microsoft conferences lately they've been showing this demo that julia white does where she shows how you can lock down documents and if people say have them on their iPhone and they're not supposed to be sharing them you can lock down the actual documents so people can't print them or forward them and it's going to take Microsoft a while till that technology is implemented in Office so that you can do that but in the interim they're going to do this thing in RMS where they have uh, a protected PDF capability so that's going to be kind of the stopgap thing until Microsoft introduces into Office the ability to really lock down documents on iOS and Android and Windows all in the same way. They also are adding OSX support for RMS. They are, uh, on the Azure front, they're adding templates and some logging enhancements, also an RMS migration toolkit that's going to let customers with uh, Active Directory RMS deployments, migrate their keys and policies to Azure RMS. And then they, uh, in this blog post I've seen uh, this week, they talk about having a private preview later this year of something they're calling the Azure RMS Connector. Uh, and that's something that, let's see, this this blog post is super long. It's like a Steven Sanofsky blog post. Um, <laughs> 
like 3,000 words but about our But at RMS. least we know who wrote it. <laughs> we do know who wrote it. Um, it's going, they, the way they say it is, the uh, connector is going to permit even the most cloud-reluctant organizations to benefit Yikes. from RMS. <laughs> Um, yeah, so if, if you want to see this, uh, this whole lengthy blog post there, look for the Microsoft Rights Management RMS team blog, and it says, here's our major update, improved office file support plus service improvements. And you can read and see lots of screenshots and read all about the many things coming to RMS soon. Yay. Yay. <laughs> squee. Squee. I don't say squee about <laughs> RMS. No, only the notepad <laughs> conference. Yeah, only the notepad. <laughs> and the code name of the week. Yeah, the code name of the week. So um, I'm not sure if this is a code name or considered a final name, uh, but the code name pick of the week is Cosmos. And Cosmos is this service that Microsoft has inside the company that is a massively parallel storage and compute service. It's almost like Hadoop in some ways, but not in all ways. And what Microsoft uses this for inside is they take all of the different kinds of data that they collect with Azure and Bing and Ad Center and Skype, um, everything from like which ads people click on to um, how people navigate on a page. They collect all this data and then they can mine it inside Microsoft and use it in different ways to make their products and services better. Uh, so right now, this is only for inside use in Microsoft. The, there's like 5,000 people inside the company who have access to it, I believe. Uh, or maybe even more than that. I think there's a chance that somehow Microsoft is going to take Cosmos and turn it into a publicly facing service, or at least parts of it. And uh, I've been, I found a couple of job posts at Microsoft that are kind of hinting that this might be the case. Um, or maybe they're just going to take um, some of the underlying technologies of Cosmos and integrate it into some other kinds of services that they make publicly facing. I'm not quite sure. But I just wanted to put Cosmos on people's radar screens because I think we're going to hear more about this uh, maybe in the next year or so uh, as to how Microsoft's going to make this available in some form to customers. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. And hmm. to kind mm -hmm. of... Uh, Reassure you after all that, a little beer. <laughs> right. Beer pick of the week. So I, I was in Toronto last week at the end of the week for oh, work. You lucky. I love that city. It's a great city, yeah. It's a great city. And they have a really great bar there for craft beer that's very much reminds me of Rattle and Hum. It's called Bar Volo. And they get really great beers from Toronto area, of course, but also from Montreal, too. And they had on tap when I was there something from Dieu du Ciel, which is a brewery in Montreal, and it's called the Solstice d'Été, the Solstice of Summer. And With what it is, it's cherries. <laughs> With cherries. It's a it's a sour wheat beer, so like a Berliner Weiss kind of, with cherries. And it's mm. this really beautiful pink color. Oh, it sounds good. Um, it's so refreshing I and really yeah. nicely flavored not too sweet not too not too sour um i would show you a picture except my picture of it is sideways oh <laughs> no <laughs> um but yeah it it was a delicious beer and it's a little bit hard to find but if you're in canada you might have better luck than here in the states uh but i i heartily recommend any of their Dieu de sale beers they're all really great i want it right it's now good. hmm Right now. In fact, I think I might go get it because that is the end of the show. <laughs> I can go get some beer. Mary jo it's good you put this at the end. If you put the beer I pick know. at the beginning, I don't know. No, it wouldn't be good. It might be a shorter show. True. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, such a good show. Paul Therott, of course, he's the uh, man in charge of the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com, also the author of many a book. You'll find them all at windows81book.com. The eight and the one being numeric, mm. including his music book and uh, the field guide for Windows 8.1, update one. Mary Jo Foley's at allaboutmicrosoft.com. That's where uh, she writes, where she hangs her writer's hat and her notepad. <laughs> <laughs> every day, really. She's always working there. And you can catch this show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC on twit.tv. We'd love it if you watch live, but if you can't, squee! But if you can't, 
<laughs> if you can't, uh, we have on-demand audio and video available always after the fact at twit.tv slash WW on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Windows Weekly. And, of course, wherever you can subscribe to uh, to netcasts like Stitcher, iTunes, the podcast app on Windows Phone, all of that. Just search for Windows Weekly. We're the one, the only, the original. Now in our eighth year of delicious broadcasting. <laughs> The nougaty centers. That nougaty cream. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. We will uh, catch you, you on the flip flop. Have a great week. Welcome home, Paul. Thank you. Get some sleep. Well, See you I next will. time on Windows. <laughs> bye bye.